This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Let's go through and have a look at the conceptual framework for financial reporting. Essentially, the conceptual framework provides us with all the underlying principles that are then used in the development of our accounting standards. So it's important that we know what these fundamental principles are so that as we go through and, and think about the accounting standards, we can understand how and why the accounting standard has been developed in the format in which it currently takes. OK, think of it. Uh, I don't know whether you've been to the, the British Museum uh, there in London uh, and what you have at the British Museum in London is the Rosetta Stone. OK, it's one of the, the most visited artefacts that you have within the British Museum. Uh, and that Rosetta Stone is what archaeologists went through and used to help them interpret the ancient Egyptian language or, or, or writings of hieroglyphics. OK, uh, and essentially the conceptual framework is the Rosetta Stone of the financial reporting world. It helps users of accounts. It helps preparers of accounts understand how and why those accounting standards have been developed in the way in which they have okay it, it, it's the the rosetta stone the building blocks the, the underlying principles of those accounting standards so it, it's important that we understand these principles as we go on to understand the specific rules within the accounting standards so what we've got uh, is essentially i think it's split into eight separate sections uh, and the first one that you've got there is that the framework goes through there and helps you understand what the role of it is. OK, so why essentially do we have this framework? OK, we've explained that very briefly, uh, but it goes through there and gives you six specific reasons. Uh, if you want, I've just gone through up there uh, and highlighted the R. As we go through at the end, we will then develop a mnemonic so that you can remember specifically what is contained within the framework. OK, uh, so R is the first letter of our mnemonic. So what is the R? What is the, the role of the framework? What is its purpose? Well, first one, it helps develop your future accounting standards. OK, uh, so as we've said, it provides the underlying principles and those underlying principles are there to help us develop new accounting standards that exist into the future. You could also think there as well, uh, a review of existing accounting standards. You know, the current accounting standards that we have, you would think were, were perfect, OK, but, but they're not. Uh, we have been recently in the process of developing a new accounting standard on revenue. Uh, we've been in the process of developing a new accounting standard on leases. So it does help us go through there and look at old standards and see if they are still applying the principles of the framework. If not, we need to go through there and update the standard to make sure that it is consistent with what is shown within the framework. Uh, also goes through as well, um, the framework reduces the number of alternative accounting treatments. Uh, in the past, when we first developed the international accounting standards, uh, a lot of the international accounting standards had alternative accounting treatments for the same item. One of which we'll touch upon later on within the course is borrowing costs. Now, if you incur interest on a loan uh, and that loan you have gone through there and used to finance the construction of a non-current asset, so PPE, the interest now has to be capitalised as part of the cost of PPE. Previously, you had the choice. You could capitalise it or you could just expense it as normal. OK, but now uh, to ensure that there is more comparability between entities, we are now only able to capitalise the cost. Similarly, if we go through there and look at intangibles, which we will in a later session, uh, if we think about development, development expenditure on intangibles now has to be capitalised. Previously, you had the option to either capitalise it or expense it. And again, that then limited the comparability between entities year on year. OK, so now yeah, the framework has ensured there is a less number uh, of alternative accounting treatments available. Uh, the other role of the framework arises very rarely, 
but helps you deal with topics that do not form the subject of an accounting standard. Think, what? How on earth can that be possible? Surely there must be an accounting standard for absolutely everything. Not necessarily. If there's some very complex transaction, you know, as businesses get more and more evolved and developed, there are more complex transactions that will occur. If there is no accounting standard, what do you do as an auditor? What do you do as a preparer of the financial statements? You have to go back to the, the underlying, the, the fundamental principles contained within our Rosetta Stone, the framework. OK, uh, also, it can go through there and assist the auditors in forming an opinion. So if there's something that they are not 100 percent happy with, they can go through there, can't they? And go back to the principles and ensure that the opinion they give is consistent with those principles that are there within the framework. Also, as well, it helps you interpret the information contained within them. Uh, so as we will see in F2, we go through there and we begin to look at accounting ratios. So gross margins, return on capital employed. And we can then be happy interpreting those ratios, knowing that the financial statements have been prepared on a basis that is fundamental across all entities. OK, they have adopted the accounting standards that follow a consistent approach. OK, and then finally, what you've got there is it goes through there and helps you give information about the approach, the formulation of the accounting standards. So what we will go through and see is that international accounting standards are very much principles based. The framework contains a set of principles, a set of ideas, and then that allows, if you like, a little bit of subjectivity in terms of the application. That is felt to be a little bit better uh, than what you have under other jurisdictions, which are very much rules based. OK. Uh, our international standards are very subjective because they go through there and apply a set of over or if you like underlying principles. OK, a uh, key bit, just a note, uh, the framework is the Rosetta Stone. It is, if you like, what underpins everything. It is not an accounting standard. OK, uh, so just be aware that it is not an accounting standard. It is a separate standalone document. OK, uh, next, what we've got on the hit list is O uh, for the objective of your financial statements. Uh, and the objective is that your financial statement should show you information about, is it the financial position, which is shown in your statement of financial position. So the assets, the liabilities and equity. It should also go through there and give you information about your performance. So looking there at your income, less your expenses to give you your profit or loss. And then your changes in financial position, uh, your changes in your financial position. You know, if you think about your position, it's the statement of financial position, which is the assets, the liabilities and equity. So we need to look at the movement in the assets, the movement in the liabilities and the movement in equity. OK, don't think that the, the change in financial position is provided by the statement of changes in equity because that just goes through there and looks at one specific balance, doesn't it? The movement in the equity balance. What about the assets? What about the liabilities? Uh, so it's not the statement of change in equity, but the statement of cash flows. Remember that that's important. That's imperative that the statement of cash flows gives you information about the changes in financial position. OK, so that's the objective. OK, we need to have information about the position, performance and changes in position. Uh, the next one that we're going to look at is the underlying assumption. So that the is looking at A. OK. Uh, and the underlying assumption when we prepare our financial statements, whether it's the, the position statement, the performance statements, uh, or looking at the changes in your financial position, uh, that there is prepared upon the going concern basis, isn't it? Something we touched upon right at the very start uh, of your SEMA qualification, wasn't it? OK. Uh, then your certificate level, we went through there and looked the statement of financial position. We said, look, we're going to prepare it based on the going concern basis. So therefore, we show your non-current and your current assets and non-current and current liabilities, wasn't it? On the basis there that you are going to continue to operate, isn't it? 
for the foreseeable future. If you don't intend to operate on the foreseeable future, you will have to change the basis of the preparation. But that's beyond the scope of the syllabus here. OK, uh, so we have an R, the role. We have O, the objective. We have A, the assumption. We will play around with all the letters to go through and create the mnemonic at the end. Uh, then what we have there is going through and looking at the qualitative characteristics. First of all, what we're going to go through and look at is the fundamental qualitative characteristics, okay, of which there are two. So when you're preparing your financial statements, the information that you present within them to ensure that we meet the objective of showing the financial position, performance and changes in financial position need to exhibit those fundamental qualitative characteristics. So the first one is that the information needs to be relevant. OK, uh, so something is relevant to the users. If it is material, so we're only interested in something if it is material to the financial statements. So that's talking about something by size. So if it is a large item, that will be of interest. Maybe that then warrants its disclosure within the notes of the accounts. And also as well, something is material by its very nature. So the one that you would need to consider yourself with there is thinking about your director's remuneration. Director's remuneration is material, possibly by its size as well, because some directors do get paid a considerable amount of money. But even if they weren't, you know, that would be material by its very nature, okay? Because they are a, a related party of that business. So the information within the financial statement is relevant, okay? It, it will focus on the materiality by size. So anything that is large, uh, maybe that something is one off and large, we need to do something about it, okay? Draw the attention of the financial statement users to that information. Uh, likewise, things need to be fairly present. Sorry, not fairly, faithfully represented. Okay, uh, in order to faithfully represent the transaction, uh, we need to show it faithfully by accounting for it based upon substance and its economic reality. So when we go through there and think about group accounts, we will account for the group accounts and show things faithfully by accounting for the concept of substance over legal form, OK? Uh, so the key bit about faithful representation is that we are preparing financial statements that reflect the economic reality. And to reflect the economic reality, we need to report based upon substance, OK? Uh, just underneath that, there are, if you like, subsections of, of faithful representation uh, that, if you like, ensure that things are faithfully represented. Uh, so as well as thinking about substance and the economic reality, uh, things need to be there. Is it neutral? So is that the free from bias? OK, so when you're making decisions about material balances, uh, make sure that you are not unduly biased in your reporting of that information. Make sure as well that it is complete so that you have all the relevant information at hand so that you can use that relevant information to go through there and demonstrate the position and the performance of this entity. And I think it goes without saying that it should be free from error, shouldn't it? Yeah, the information that you want within the financial statements should be free from error. But do note, when we're talking about error, it needs to be free from material error, OK? Uh, the user of the accounts are only interested in things that are material. But do just be aware, a lot of small errors could go through there and combine to be one big material error. So. That's something you would need to be aware of as an auditor. OK, uh, so that's the fundamental qualitative characteristics uh, we then have. Is it the enhancing fundamental qualitative characteristics? Quite a mouthful, that isn't it? Qualitative characteristics. Uh, and again, it's what you're going to have to learn, isn't it? Uh, you've got the four enhancing qualitative characteristics. Uh, first one is understandability, uh, and that's just ensuring there that the users have a reasonable amount of knowledge. You know, that they're not 
particularly qualified in the world of accountancy or, or they are experts, but they have a reasonable business background and can understand the essentials of accounting because we don't want to be able to go through there and say, well, look, this transaction is so complex and because it's so complex, we're going to leave it out. You know, we, we can't do that. We assume that the users have a reasonable knowledge so that they can go through there and understand even the most complex of transactions. We will support them by putting in enhanced disclosure if it is specifically complex and that will then therefore go through and ensure that we are enhancing the users and their knowledge. Okay. Uh, likewise, comparability. Uh, I think we've mentioned this before, haven't we? By being consistent uh, in terms of the accounting treatments, uh, being consistent, how we adopt that year on year and from entity to entity, then we can ensure comparability. So, so do just be careful. Comparability does go through and talk about from period to period, so year on year. But also the one that people tend to neglect is company to company. OK, because that's why you know we, we spoke, spoke about earlier on, didn't we? That if we have a choice with regards to accounting treatment for a similar item, that's going to lead to a lack of comparability, isn't it, between companies? What happens if one company capitalizes interest on borrowings and one company expenses it? It's going to have a big impact on profit and therefore it will reduce our comparability. Uh, the other enhancing qualitative characteristic there is timeliness. OK, uh, so you need to get the information quickly. Uh, obviously, uh, the, the quicker you get it, the better it will be. Uh, but sometimes the quicker you get it, that that reduces the relevance, doesn't it? So there's a bit of a, a balancing act, isn't there? You know, we want the most relevant information. Uh, but we want to make sure the, that that information is not only relevant, but it's also faithfully represented, isn't it? So if you like faithful representation, sometimes referred to as reliable information, isn't it? Uh and to get the most reliable information, you might have to wait a, a considerable length of time. And that then just brings about the issue there, doesn't it? If we wait for a particular length of time to get the most reliable information, then maybe that information loses its reliability because it's then a little bit too old, isn't it? So we've got a bit of a balance between timeliness and reliable information. Don't wait too long to get the most reliable information and the most complete information. Uh, you might have to strike a balance, okay? Uh, and then verifiability, a uh, key bit there, I think, is just talking about validity, isn't it? Okay, you want to be able to go back and verify the transactions back to supporting documentation to go through there and ensure that it is valid information. The, the supporting evidence backs up the figures and the disclosure that we have within the financial statements, okay? There we go. So that's the first, if you like, five aspects of the framework. You've got the, is it the role? We've got the, the objectives, the underlying assumptions, the fundamental qualitative characteristics and the enhancing qualitative characteristics. We'll go on within the next video and then complete the framework.